Ron Slay, we are hugged up on each other because we've got a party going on here in Clarksville yeah. at Buffalo Wild Wings. It we, is a party. We've They've also, been drinking for a long time here. They have. Yes. <laughs> the chain gang from Clarksville. We've also got Ro <laughs> Roger Saffold sitting over there. <laughs> All by himself. We're being yep. safe. <laughs> Big Saffold, what are you doing, man? Just, just lonely over here. <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, I get it, man. I didn't, I didn't had COVID. I, I got the vaccine. Yeah, like the three weeks ago. <laughs> you know what right. I'm saying? Every, I, I got it all, Thanks man. Thanks to us, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> we just have to be safe. You yeah. Know? We're, yeah. We're protecting us, not you. Right. Oh, see, I knew it. I knew what it was. We I also have was. Big Savagery himself, Ramon Foster, is in the house. I'm, I'm just chilling. Oh, my God. We're sharing the mic right now. Yeah, so that's real. You can take it back now, Brent. Run. You chill with the jokes. <laughs> right. All right, y'all. <laughs> Pass the mic. First thing we need to do is probably introduce our guy, Ron Slay. Hey, I'm what up? I'm in the building. I'm in the building. Hey, I'm in the building. 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 What do you think about the Clarksville crew here? Hey, man, I think, I think, I, listen, hold up. Clarksville! Clarksville, I need you on call. Yeah. There they are. I go. Sound like a party to me. Sound like a party to me. Listen, this is this one. Hey, he in the building. He's in the building. Come on. What? Ooh, we. Oh, hump. They want it, huh? They want it. Run it back, huh? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Number one at that's hey, what it is. Let's start back. there, Saffold. You told us last Straight week, up. twelve year career, you never been in a number one seat. How good did that feel walking off that field? Man, I've been treating it like a like a playoff game <laughs> since since Miami. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> uh, that's that's kind of how yeah. I've been treating it, man. You know, we had a couple shots at either keeping number one or getting it back uh, a couple times, and we fell short. You know, getting it now and having it secured, man. A lot of our a lot of our guys needed that bye week, man. Happy for them. Tell me the uh, the conversation after half, because that first half, you guys are dominating. It's, you know, what, fifth gear or, or sixth gear? Don't fancy cars have, like, more than fifth gear? I don't know. I don't have any of those. But, but like. That's what happened when you used have the foreign calls. <laughs> when you used the foreign calls, that's what happened. So, yeah, full speed ahead. And then a little bit of a lull come after halftime and and Mike Keith was like I think it was just stuck in neutral you know for for this Titans team but what was the conversation like on the sideline during neutral you know um we always talk about like there's one thing to say it and other things to do it and the conversation in the locker room at halftime it was don't let up you know what I mean it was like wolves don't take plays off so literally we were over here trying to talk to talk ourselves up like hey listen we need to go out here we need to continue to play we need to continue to be in a dominant fashion like, we're, like we've been doing, and we need to be on the hunt. And little things start happening, and then things aren't going your way anymore. You lose your momentum completely. Uh, we're not connecting like we, like we need to on third down and getting us three, three and outs. Three, three and outs in the third quarter. It's like, okay, what's happening? And then you got to regroup. But, yeah, we were all about continuing to play aggressive, continuing to be dominant, Continue to work down the field, but we just hit we hit this lull, and everybody was kind of shocked. And then now it's just kind of like, all right, we can't have situations like this because in the playoffs, you guys already know it's too many good teams. People are going to take advantage of that, and you're going to be regretting it in the long run. So, the play. Let's go ahead and talk about it. You're talking about how there was a lull, and it's hard in sports to get out of that. Honestly, like oh yeah, to flip that switch. So the Titans lead 21-18. They, you guys had given up um, 18 straight points. Mm -hmm. The Titans had run 11 plays for 16 yards in the second half. We're into the fourth quarter now. Third and five with 10.22 left. Tannehill escapes the sack. <laughs> Mike Keith on the call said he was buried. He thought he was done. Yeah. And he comes out of it, runs into Lawan. Lawan takes off sprinting up the field. I was like, hey, man, don't go too far. <laughs> <laughs> Watch had, the hammies. Watch the hammies. <laughs> we had Nick Westbrook Aquino on yesterday. He said, I thought the play was dead. Luckily, I looked back and saw him get out of it, so I was able to make a play. He said he was mad at himself, though he thought he should have scored. Mm. But what was your 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 thought process thought process on that play? Uh, well, you know, 
The crazy thing is all this is happening behind me. So I, yeah. I have no idea what's going on, but I heard everybody start cheering and we had so many fans there. I didn't know if it was Houston fans <laughs> or our fans. So I'm over there. I, so I take a peek. I take a quick little peek. And now I'm just like, oh man. And then I hear our fans start cheering. And then I see him and Taylor take off. I'm like, oh, okay, so should I start running downfield? <laughs> and then I see him cock the ball back. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, who is he throwing to? And I look up, oh, that's my brother. That's my brother, Nick Westbrook. You know, I, you, what's up? Ah. But, but anyway, but anyway, yeah, I see him waving his hands and I'm like, oh, please catch this ball. And you know what? I thought he was going to score too, but that, that, that was a crazy, crazy play. And you know what I'm saying? We really got to thank our, our strength coach, Frank, man, you know, because those incline pipe twists really did help Tannehill stay on his feet and be able to make magical play on the field. So, and see, that's why, if y'all don't mind, Theresa, that's yeah. why I want to go right there to Because yeah. okay? yeah. quarterbacks really get crapped on, unless you Lamar Jackson, okay? Oh, yeah. Unless you him or maybe one or two other quarterbacks. How much trash did he talk on the plane ride back about exp about extending that play? Because I know he bragged about it. No, he didn't say a word. No! Really? We literally had to pull it out of him. It's Just Ryan Tannehill. Tannehill. I'm yeah. not Tannehill shocked. Is different, no! Bro. He's like the most different. boring. I, 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 it, yes. it's, it's ridiculous. How like, he going to finger roll and not brag about the spin out? That's what, that's what I'm saying. I mean, I heard him get hit and scream and one and throw a touchdown. <laughs> but he didn't talk about that. What? He didn't, he didn't talk about that ever again. We had to bring that up to him. <laughs> he was like, hey, what? <laughs> I mean, I, I love he's that. He's amazing. He, he's a great competitor. He's a great competitor, but he's an even better teammate. I mean, yeah. the dude's the ultimate teammate. He's never going to make anybody feel bad about anything. He's always going to take everything on himself. And he's one of the toughest guys that we got on the team. He doesn't That's get all. enough credit. No, Absolutely. not at all. Not and at I, all. I joke all the time not about all. how boring he is and <laughs> that he never <laughs> says anything. But, like, it, it, there is a level of respect there that he can be that guy, but then be the guy that you talk about, the and one guy. That's right. such a great guys. story. Yeah. Right. That's such a great story. Um, so when you saw the play, like the highlight of the play for the first time, were you like, oh, my God? First of all, I was like, Ferkser, you cannot – hit the defensive end into the quarterback. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he hit, him right so hard. Him, yeah. he hit him so hard that he was a blur yeah. on the replay. I was like, oh, how did he even get back there so fast? But then, you know, seeing seeing what, what Ryan was able to do, I mean, it's just incredible. It just it just shows you what type of guy this guy is, man. I Boy, mean, he does it every time. You ever seen him You ever seen him throw an interception? Watch who's around the pile every yeah. single time. It's always Ryan. Ryan's always the first guy there. And he's not, like, trying to trip somebody or – Fall in the way. He's trying to blow somebody up. He's he's jumping in between people because he's mad. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, he that that's the type of guy that he is, and that's what fits this team. So I after mean, after he completed that ball, he's running down the field, field pumping his fist. What was the huddle like after that? I've got to think because like Titans fans, when they see that play, they're like, okay, we got him now. What were y'all thinking? We were like, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. <laughs> You know, when, when, when you're struggling, and, and like you said, uh, to get out of that lull, it's, it comes when somebody makes a play. That's how you get out of it. Somebody makes a play that changes the momentum of the game, and that's what happened. Mm -hmm. So this, this is the point in which I think most people that's been around the game knew that the Texans were either going to just straight lay down or they were going to try to ruin you guys this night. Like, going oh, yeah. into that, you kind of probably sensed it walking into NRG, oh, they coming to play today. They, they're not ready to ship their cars to South Beach just yet. They want to come spoil your day. Did you have that feeling going into it? Honestly, when we, when we went up 21 nothing, it was feeling like they were kind of easing up a little bit at the uh -huh. end of the half. And I think that they got some type of motivation in the second half because they Great. treated it like it was 0-0 and just were coming after us. They were moving all over the place. It was more pressure than we've seen for them all year. They were going for it. I mean... The coach was getting an evaluation on, on how yeah. he was closing that game. Yeah. So he wasn't going to let them just give up because that could be his job. See, I had said that. I, I was like, man, when you had, you've done good the whole season. The other team really doesn't have anything to play for. Once you get to a point in the in game, it's like, hey, man, these dudes, put our, put our foot on their neck. They're going to quit. And they was right there at the point. Like you said, I was like, man, something had to happen, dude, for an athlete to kick in and play that hard again. 
Some would say it, man. Somewhere along the lines. I don't know if it was bonuses Absolutely. or what, but Absolutely. Some would say Absolutely. It. it was probably money on the line yeah. for sure. <laughs> you know what I'm money saying? for turnovers, money yeah, for, for tackles for loss, money yeah. for everything. But honestly, you know, when we had that play action, play action play to uh to Julio, if yeah. we would have connected with that, I feel like they would have I feel like they would have yeah. laid that down. Hit it. Yep. They would have laid down. And my and my big behind would have been on the bench. <laughs> Chilling. Chilling. <laughs> Chilling. <laughs> Roger Saffold, the OG OG. We also got Ramon Foster from Jamie Mart and Ramon Brent Doherty, Ron Slay, and Don Davenport broadcasting live in Clarksville at Buffalo Wild Wings. We'll be here until 6 o'clock on 104.5 The Zone.